Hey guys, Chara5 here, and today we are starting off uh, book week with a very, very iconic um, villain, <laughs> I want to say. Uh, I've never, ever experienced any form of the Hannibal Lecter novels at all, um, or any of the movies for that matter. I know the very bare minimums about this character, but I think at the same time, that being said, if you've seen the movies, you barely know anything about this character to begin with. Um, Hannibal Lecter is a super, super iconic character. I guess before I get into you know what I think about the character and, and the mediums that he's been in, I do want to say that this is a piece that was definitely rushed. If you end up liking this piece... That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and it's, I'm not I'm not saying I don't like this piece. The thing is, um, I was doing this and the last piece uh, back to back. So most of the, as I've said before this this year, uh, most of these drawings have taken me anywhere from two to three hours. But usually it's it's two, like just a little bit over two hours. I'm talking ten minutes over two hours, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, usually. This piece took me 50 minutes. <laughs> I wasn't even taking time at all. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't even realize, uh, because I, I could have taken two hours easily. Um, but I guess part of my subconscious was like, you know what? Do this quickly. Because what I wanted to do with for this was kind of make them car caricatures, uh, some a medium that I'm very comfortable with. And doing Cutesy Week, uh, really made me realize how much I love doing caricatures. Not cartoons, necessarily, but, like, looking at someone and, you know, drawing them with exaggerated features. A caricature version of themselves. Not necessarily a cartoon where it's, like, the shapes are very simple, but uh, where you're taking an actual portrait of a, of a person and exaggerating their features to make it look a little goofy. But still, they look a lot like them. And I, I actually realized in high school that I... You know, because of my background in, in doing cartoons, I wasn't half bad at doing caricatures. So I figure, you know what, I'll just do that for for book week because, you know, books often have very caricaturistic, uh, I don't even know, I doubt that's a word, but they, they have very, uh, the, the characters that they draw have the characteristics of a caricature. Uh, mostly if it's a kid book, they're, you know, they're cartoons. Uh, but I figure, you know what, let's let's have a go at it ended up ended up not looking like a caricature at all um so i failed on that but it 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 is sort of a pseudo portrait uh so i guess i got that explanation out of the way just wanted because this is by default a shorter video when i speed these up they always usually end up at around 10 minutes like that's the default when i sped this one up it was four and a half minutes so i was like yeah no i can't do that <laughs> um so i i did ended up stretching it out to around 10 minutes just for the sake of consistency because otherwise this would be a very very quick drawing I would not even be able to get my opinions on the character out at all which I guess wouldn't be such a bad idea because I've again I've never really experienced any of of the Hannibal Lecter um, anything really but uh, even as a kid I remember the poster for Silence of the Lambs there was something about that that poster I think is just so iconic with like the face and the the butterfly on top of the mouth like I can see it clear as day in my head where I saw that that um poster I have no idea but I remember it very vividly uh, a cousin of mine back in Mexico actually has a poster of uh the red dragon in his room and I never knew what that movie was about <laughs> at all and i honestly i did cuz because they didn't share a name like that's i think the name of the novels as well red dragon and and silence of the lambs silence of the lambs being a sequel to red dragon uh i had no idea that the two movies were connected um and i guess if i could say that i've experienced any form of the uh, uh of the novels um, it would have to be probably Hannibal Rising, which was the prequel uh, to the entire series. Because from what I know, it's Red Dragon, uh, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, and then Hannibal Rising. Those are the four books. Um, and the last one is a prequel. 
to the whole series, basically explaining Hannibal Lecter's past, who he is, or why he is who he is. And I don't, I don't remember if that is exactly the book, but it must be because I remember uh, we were out on a family trip, you know, my extended family, and my aunt, I think, had a copy of of that book, and I, I picked it up. Um, ironically, I'm not much of a reader, but for some reason, like, her having a book there and me having really not much else to do, I, I picked it up, and I I started reading it, and I thought it was it was pretty interesting. Um, I didn't get too far into it, but I, I started reading about his relationship to his sister and all that, and I, I did find it kind of interesting, uh, but I thought that it, that, that was the... Um, that was like the first book. And then f- for some reason I heard somewhere that the books were written in reverse order. So Red Dragon was the last book, Silence of the Lambs was the third one, Hannibal was the second, and Hannibal Rising was the first. Uh, and th- that's what I was led to believe. I didn't know that that wasn't really true. I Again, I don't really know. But in terms of the kind of character that Hannibal Lecter is. A lot of people view him as a very, very terrifying character. And I am sort of interested in watching the Red Dragon and Silence of the Lambs. Although part of me feels like I'll be disappointed. Um, if only because I know for a fact that that uh, Hannibal is barely in Silence of the Lambs. Like, he, he has, like, two scenes. But despite that, he's such an iconic character. And, and, and Anthony Hopkins just pertains portrays this really creepy dude like just that one scene of the fava beans and Chianti that alone is like a lot of people said that you know they they shiver with that I personally never found it too creepy but I do find it you know disturbing just like okay that's that's weird please never do that again maybe (laughs) but just conceptually the character that is Hannibal Lecter to me is Again, just conceptually, it's terrifying. Uh, and I was talking about this with my friends the other day. I think one of the scariest things in real life is a, a highly intelligent person that is crazy. <laughs> you know, that that person has a few screws loose. Because that that doesn't mean they stop being intelligent. They're still incredibly smart, and it's this intelligence that allows them to do you know, even crazier things. If a crazy person isn't all too bright, you know, that they're probably not as dangerous. That doesn't mean they're not, you know, they're still pretty dangerous because they don't know what they're doing, but a highly intelligent person does know what they're doing to some extent. They're, they're just, you know, they think differently, they're wired differently, so they probably have no regard for human life. Um... Or, you know, they, they view human life as a plaything, And to me, that's what's so terrifying about it. But it's also very interesting because they use Hannibal Lecter as an asset. They, they use him to figure out, like, okay, well, why is Buffalo Bill or whoever the villain was in Red Dragon or whatever, um, why are they doing the things they do, you know? Uh, they, they use a serial killer to get into the mind of a serial killer. And to me, that's just the concept alone is super, super interesting. Um, the mask, you know, it, it invokes such wonder. Like, why is he in that mask? Is this man really that dangerous? He looks so frail. So, like, he looks like a sane person. And that's, I think, one of the scariest things. Like, just thinking about it is is frightening to me. Because it, it it's not supernatural at all. It's it's such, you know, it's so in the realm of reality that that's what makes it creepy to me. That's what makes it so scary. As a kid, you fear all these supernatural things because it's unnatural. You know, it's something that we're that we don't identify with. It's something that we can't relate to. That's why we find it scary. It's out of the norm. But as an adult, I think you start you start seeing scarier things in the things that we can grasp and the things that we can observe and can appreciate. Sure, unnatural things are still scary, but it's the things that we do understand that I think become even creepier because we understand them. And at the same time, we don't. And like in the mind of a serial killer, 
we can consciously understand, oh, they had a troubled past, you know, they had a difficult life, abusive parents, whatever. We can understand that, but we have a hard time understanding what it is they feel, what what it is they think, how they think. Um, and I feel like maybe Hannibal Lecter has been the subject of extensive psychoanalytic subject um, or, you know, discussion, rather. He's a very interesting character, and you know what? Honestly, I I think I'd rather read the books than watch the movies. Not because I think the movies might be bad, but because you know it, it might have a better insight as to what the character is and who he is. Uh, what I ended up doing for this portrait, I yes, I was using Anthony Hopkins as a reference. It does not look like Anthony Hopkins at all, um, but it it. I kind of did a mesh of that reference to what I read that he looks like in the book, which is like uh, a younger type dude with the uh, the widow's uh, beak, something like that. Widow's peak. Um, so if anything, he just looks like a younger version of of Hannibal Lecter. But that's this is the final piece. Um, I did rush it, but I still think it looks at least somewhat decent. Uh, I was actually surprised that I was able to do it in the amount of time I did, honestly. Um, and I hope that I'm able to do the rest of <laughs> them at just as fast and as okay as this. Uh, but preferably, I'd like to go for quality over, you know, uh, quantity in this case. But, like I said, this is the final piece. Tomorrow, I don't exactly remember who I'm going to be doing. Let me take a quick peek. Um, I will be doing, ooh, uh, very, very topical. <laughs> um, uh, I think if, if you know who I'm going to be doing just based on that hint alone, kudos to you. Uh, I'm going to be drawing two different characters and I might just do them in a cartoon style because I think that would actually favor it. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and stay awesome. This is Jar 5 signing off.